welcome to Spotlight on Middlesex County. This is where we share the latest news on events, services, and programs throughout the county. I'm your host, Middlesex County Board of County Commissioners Director Ron Rios, and I'm glad you could join me. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and our nation is in the midst of a mental health crisis. People of all ages, genders, races, and economic circumstances are affected, including so many here in Middlesex County. This crisis existed before the COVID-19 pandemic, but the pandemic made it so much worse. That's why, as I announced in my recent State of the County address, in 2023, we are launching a comprehensive behavioral health program in Middlesex County. And since mental health issues and substance use disorders are often, although not always connected, our behavioral health program will help ensure our residents who are battling these issues or who have loved ones who are receive the support they need. Our behavioral health initiative, which kicks off this month with a round table discussion that brings together crucial voices from the healthcare community, will encompass the array of services already provided by the County's Office of Human Services, the Atlowski Center for Mental Health Care, the Department of Public Safety and Health, and our community partners. This new initiative will bring these offerings together under one umbrella with the county serving as the single point of entry for people who are seeking behavioral health resources. It will include dedicated follow-up procedures to ensure people receive the help they need and feel comfortable reaching out again if they need further assistance. The ongoing mental health crisis is only made worse by people feeling like they have no one to turn to. We are working to change that. Of course, this all builds off of the amazing work already being done every day by so many county employees. To speak more about the mental health crisis and the services and support already available here in Middlesex County, here are Elizabeth Marchesi from our Department of Community Services and Dr. Joseph Kadian from the Atlowski Center for Mental Health Care. I'm Liz Marchese. I'm the Middlesex County Mental Health Administrator in the Department of Community Services. So I've been with Middlesex County about three and a half years. It'll be four in September and I've worked in behavioral health the whole time. I do a lot of things in my role. It varies day to day. So I'm a government liaison to our county mental health board and our professional advisory committee along with our campaign to end stigma committee. I provide information and referral and navigation of resources to community members and some providers. Um, I also work closely with the Division of Mental Health and Addiction Services at the state level. So we review their request for proposals um, and I also oversee the process for the Mental Health Board that also reviews those proposals. And under the Division of Mental Health and Addiction Services, I work with the Disaster and Terrorism Branch and they have a program called Disaster Response Crisis Coordinators. So I work with the DRCCs in Middlesex County who are deployed whenever there's some type of disaster, so environmental, technological, shooting, violence, things of that nature. Um, I also, I oversee um, the county funded mental health programs that we have as well. I typically don't work directly with the community, so I do provide a lot of um, information and referral and navigation of resources, but that's kind of my extent. I'm not providing any counseling or case management services, but we do work directly with agencies who are working with community members, and they're seeing def a definite increase in mental health crises, especially among the youth. So that may look like an increase in hospitalizations or admittance into our designated screening center. We're also seeing with certain populations such as older adults and maybe individuals who are homeless or at risk of homelessness that they are needing just, um, they are needing mental health services just as much as their regular services. Um, but I will say the silver lining of all of this is that there has been more conversation around mental health and more people are comfortable talking about mental health and their own needs. And I think that makes people more comfortable in seeking treatment. Um, so I, and obviously I would not be sitting here today um, if this conversation was not happening. I think it's played out how it has across the country, across the world. Um, I will say that our providers were really amazing during the pandemic and they were very, very quick to adjust their services 
to fit the changes that we were all kind of going through. So they were really quick to do telehealth services, provide phones, tablets, laptops to all their consumers and to um, implement COVID precautions. Um, so we don't really have much information on the data on what it was like for these individuals who were turning to substance use disorders, but our providers were very quick to accommodate those needs. So we do, as I mentioned earlier, have three county funded mental health programs. So that includes residential services through Serve Centers of New Jersey. We also have um, case management services with Rutgers UBHC, and that program is called the Specialized Case Management Outreach Services. We call it SCAMAS. And we have an emergency services peer advocate initiative with CSPNJ, which is the collaborative support programs of New Jersey. And it's really great that we have those services because not every county is able to have their own county funded programs. And we also have the George Outlowski Center for Mental Health Care, um, that they're also a great resource for anybody in the county um, who has behavioral health needs. So some of the outreach that I do is just to the community in general. So my colleague and I, who's the Municipal Alliance Coordinator, will do tabling events. So we'll table Rutgers Day, Middlesex County Day, North Brunswick Day, East Brunswick Day. We like to be out within the community, teaching them about stigma, about the services that Human Services offers. I know that some of the other offices um, within the department work with the older adult population, veterans, um, and the homeless population. So some of the biggest issues we see in terms of people trying to seek treatment is stigma. So not many people know what stigma is and we specifically talk about it in relation to behavioral health. So stigma is like a mark of shame or disgrace. So people may feel ashamed um, of their own needs and may not come forward to seek treatment, which is why we really try to raise awareness on stigma and why we launched our campaign to end stigma. Um, so we can kind of end it because it, is a great barrier for a lot of people. And we are also seeing a lot of staff shortages um, just in the behavioral health field in general, which is an issue because there is a very high demand for these services and not enough staff to accommodate them. And we are also seeing a lot of very long wait list to receive services. So this could just be for outpatient treatment, for psychiatry treatment, or even for residential services. I think the pandemic definitely increased the mental health need and I do think that behavioral health workers were seeing an excess amount of burnout or experiencing an excess amount of burnout. But we actually had a training for one of our committees a few months ago where the instructor discussed that there has always been an issue in behavioral health staffing, so just not having enough people interested in getting the degrees to become counselors, therapists, what have you. Um, but the pandemic definitely exacerbated it. So what we're hoping um, for the Behavioral Health Roundtable is to identify gaps in behavioral health services within our community and hopefully build on those gaps and kind of be able to fill them in with services that are needed. Our office is very excited to be a part of the planning of the Behavioral Health Roundtable. I think it's really important to gather leadership together to have this discussion. Um, that way that they know what's going on and there's kind of communication across systems and seeing how we can all work together to serve our community better. People can get help um, through our website. So under Department of Community Services, Office of Human Services, we do have our addiction recovery directories and our mental health services directories up there updated. We also have copies of them. So if anybody wants to call 732, 745-4186 to request copies of those, we'd be happy to provide them. And they can also call that number if they are in need of some information about mental health services or behavioral health services within the county. And we also have the treatment services locator. I believe you can just find that by Googling treatment services locator in Middlesex County. So anybody who needs help with either mental health or substance use issues can reach the Office of Human Services at 732-745-4186. Our office is open Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. through 4.15 p.m. Looking for free, family fun in Middlesex County? Join us for Celebrate Middlesex County on Saturday, June 10th. Stop by Roosevelt Park in Edison from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. for interactive booths and displays highlighting Middlesex County offices and partners, and free, family-friendly activities including local food vendors, live music and performances, 
games and activities, touch a truck, roller skating, arts and crafts, historical interpreters, and much more. Visit MiddlesexCountyNJ.gov forward slash celebrate for more info. The New Jersey primary election is Tuesday, June 6. Don't miss your chance to make your voice heard. Visit MiddlesexCountyNJ.gov forward slash vote for more information about how, when, and where to vote in this year's primary election. Uh, my name is Joe Kadian. Uh, I serve as the executive director of the George Jatlowski Senior Center for Mental Health Care. Um, I received my master's degree in clinical psychology at the New School for Social Research, proceeded with my doctoral candidacy at NYU in the Department of Applied Psychology, and ultimately received my doctorate in psychology at St. Elizabeth's University. Uh, I have uh, over 40 years of experience in, the, in behavioral health. Starting way back, uh, my first entry-level position was as an entry-level counselor in an adult partial hospital program in uh, Jersey City, at Jersey City Medical Center. Uh, currently, as I said, I serve as, as the executive director of the Atlowski Center. You know, over the years, I didn't know much about uh, this uh, organization. I've been in the field and um, the last 25 years I served as uh, the president and CEO of a freestanding community mental health center in Hudson County. But being involved in the state, I had not known much about this center and I find it when I came here in November of, eight, in November of 2018, I found it to be such a gem, a hidden gem that people didn't realize uh, the value uh, maybe of, of this center. Um, we provide uh, two essential programs. Let me begin by first, I like talking first about this center is um, one of many that developed in the late 60s, early 70s as a result of the vision that John F. Kennedy put forward in 1963. Uh, it was actually the very last bill he signed into law known as the Community Mental Health Act. And what that was was an opportunity for states and local governments to put, put up these community mental health centers with federal funds that would allow people who didn't have resources, who didn't have money, would have access to affordable uh, mental health care. And the George J. Edlowski Center is one that goes back to that period of time. And um, we, do, we, we do realize that this building was first used in 1970, but we also are aware that the center was in operation for a couple of years before that in other uh, smaller locations before it, it did come finally to this building. So it has a, it has a distinctive record uh, and over the years and still consistent with the idea of providing affordable and available mental health care to people who before that, would not have access to such care. We have uh, essentially, as I said, two major program elements. One is our outpatient program, for which we have 18 clinical staff prepared to provide services, individual group and family counseling. We have uh, three supervisors and one director, Dr. Elena Wood, who is a psychologist and serves as the program director. In that program, we provide services to anyone ages five and up. Uh, people who would be serviced in this program would be people who are experienced everything along a continuum. We've seen so much that we can provide help for in the outpatient department. It could start maybe with some kind of mild reactions to certain family situations, work-related situations, maybe mild reactive situations, we call them all the way on up to increased anxiety, depression, um, maybe a trauma or something, um, a loss that one might experience, and all the way up to what we call the more serious and persistent mental illnesses. Like, and I'll mention this again in, in, a, in a few minutes, schizophrenia and bipolar disorder and major depression. So you can think of the outpatient program as providing uh, initial services to everyone that comes into the center 
and we can provide usually short term we try to provide short term therapy but it's individual group family and couples counseling our other major program element is called our partial care program and that program is serviced by 12 uh, clinicians typically uh, counselors and social workers and it is led by uh, Deborah Klein, who serves as our program director, and uh, Dana Lagasse, who is also a licensed clinical social worker as the assistant director. Now, this program is uh, designed particularly for individuals ages 18 and up who present with a more serious uh, condition than what you might see in the outpatient department. We refer to this as serious and persistent mental illness. That would be people who typically carry a diagnosis of schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, or uh, major recurrent depression. It's a day program, so we provide kind of a psychosocial rehabilitation uh, program of services, different groups, educational groups, therapeutic groups, and so forth. That, again, as I say, is for people 18 and up. Both of our program elements are uh, provided with psychiatric services by another unit we have, which we refer to as our medical unit. Our medical unit consists of uh, three full-time uh, psychiatrists, two of which are uh, certified, board certified in adult and child and adolescent services. One uh, advanced practice nurse and one part-time psychiatrist and then two RNs who assist with uh, medication needs, injections, and that kind of thing. So those are essentially our three, uh, our three uh, lines of service that we provide uh, to the community uh, in Middlesex. Sometimes we're often asked uh, by people in the community, how do we know where to go or what type of service we might need or, or what is the help that could be available to us? Well, uh, generally the way I think about it is, um, an outpatient facility is probably your first, uh, first uh, place to look. Uh, and it, for most people and most of us, I think it begins when maybe you're experiencing certain sadness, anger, loneliness, dissatisfaction with your work or family, anger that, that's persisting longer than, than usual. And we usually like to look at a time frame of two weeks. And if this person is experiencing that and it becomes more intense over the course of two weeks, that might be a reason to just seek help, just try to talk to someone. That's what we can do here. Uh, we could begin the process because, you know, it, this could be something that could accelerate for you or it could be something that uh, maybe just some uh, short-term psychotherapy or counseling could help with um, maybe your living situation or, or making different decisions for yourself or whatever. But it may be even more than that. It may be even triggering whatever's going on, maybe triggering something that might be a more serious condition. So um, I would suggest one, maybe begin with an outpatient facility like ours. Give us a call. Uh, we have screeners uh, available in the building five days a week, and one can uh, access a, a screener uh, in real time and uh, maybe from a brief discussion might get a better sense of what they might need. Uh, the best way to, to, to talk about Middlesex County I would like is to begin with what we understand to be the national trend that happened because Middlesex County I believe if, if full studies were done I think we would find that we are right in there with what was um, uh, seen in national uh, data uh, and state data. Um, there was overall a 25 percent increase in people experiencing uh, mental health conditions and that is primarily during that period of anxiety and depression. Um, we, we find that um, when we think what are the variables, what contributed to that? Well, what was going on during the pandemic? Uh, well, we were all isolated. We were all um, kind of living life like we've never lived it before. So the isolation, being uh, unable to connect with others in your community, not being able to uh, share time with loved ones, um, 
grief and bereavement that we were experiencing with people. Uh, we've lost, lost a lot of people and everyone, I think, knows someone who was severely ill or, or died. Uh, so it was all those things that changed for people during that time was really what contributed to this increase. And all those things I mentioned earlier, right, uh, the, the loneliness, the sadness, and all of that stuff that typically brings people into these centers, you know, pre, pre-pandemic, right? They're just exacerbated and they're, and they're, um, they're at, at a level that um, uh, was concerning during that period. And what we, we do notice from studies and statistics and what we, I, what we saw here, the two groups that were affected most through COVID were women and children ages six to 17. We, we mentioned why that is the case for children. We understand in addition to the isolation and all of that that are so important for children to have contact with their people, their friends, their peers. They also had the added burden of uh, social media, which they began to rely more on. As a result, what studies show that we see kids in this age group had, during this period had such a disproportionately higher risk of suicidal or self-destructive behavior. Um, and I would like to um, just add at the end here um, a couple of things I'd like uh, people to know in Middlesex County. Um, one is, uh, we have what is called a community advisory council. And this council actually um, uh, is a part of the vision of, of the Community Mental Health Act that I referred to earlier. A, a component of the mental health centers that were being created had to have some kind of connection with the community. And this is indeed what this is. This is uh, an opportunity for people in our community throughout Middlesex County who have an interest in mental health, who have an interest in how we at the Atlowski Center provide mental health service, have an interest in uh, maybe their history of mental health here or elsewhere, and uh, have important information they would like to share or guide us in some way to do our job better. And that is the Community Advisory Council. Uh, if you look on our website, we do have information uh, that could, uh, if you're interested, um, to seek out, uh, I think there's a contact there. If not, I'll make sure there, there will be one, uh, where if you're interested, you could reach out to us and we could uh, have you on our council. Please be, uh, be know that you can call us at any time uh, during uh, those hours, Monday through Friday. Uh, the number is 732-442. 1666 extension 2089. Please call. As I said, we have screeners available, and uh, if you have questions or concerns, uh, they can be addressed for you. Thank you. As our nation faces an unprecedented behavioral health crisis, Middlesex County became the first and possibly only county in New Jersey to assemble a group of behavioral health experts for a roundtable and workshop event. Held on Tuesday, May 16th, the event included a panel discussion featuring leaders in healthcare, mental health services, substance use prevention, treatment, and recovery, health policy, and law enforcement, as well as workshops focused on specific topics related to behavioral health. County Commissioner Director Ronald G. Rios addressed the crowded theater, and New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy provided the keynote. New Jersey Human Services Commissioner Sarah Edelman and New Jersey Attorney General Matt Placken also addressed the audience. The Behavior Health Roundtable and Workshop event marked the start of a larger conversation around how Middlesex County can best address the behavior health crisis. Thank you for watching this episode of Spotlight on Middlesex County. My thanks as well to Elizabeth Marchesi from the Department of Community Services and Dr. Joseph Kadian from the Yatlowski Center for sharing their thoughts regarding behavioral health here in Middlesex County. As always, more information about the topics we discussed today can be found on our website at www.middlesexcountynj.gov. On behalf of the entire Board of County Commissioners, I hope that you and your family are staying safe and healthy. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time with another episode of Spotlight on Middlesex County.